Okay, so uh, good morning everybody. I'm really honored to start this conference. So uh, today I will not speak about software, sorry. So uh, I will try to explain how a small company somewhere can uh, interest people like Apple and have uh, a technology like the Face ID being possible in the last iPhone. So uh, about Erlim, so Erlim is one of the world leaders of optical metrology. I think that most of you guys uh, do not know absolutely what is it. So what we are doing, in fact, we are measuring light. And we have uh, created the company in 1992. I, uh, I am one of the co-founders of this company. We have started somewhere in the west of uh, France, in Calvados. So Calvados, we have some very good alcohol and cheese. We are mostly famous for this and not for technology and uh, surely not for people like Apple. Our main idea was to work on something which is extremely uh, specific, measuring the light. And most of this thing, we are measuring the light in anger. About our company since the beginning, so we were two guys, we were a bit alone. And uh, we have really worked on having a very strong uh, R&D, uh, especially people coming from electronic, optics, and of course software. We have a lot of software in our systems. Uh, today we are something like one, uh, 120 people, uh, especially for production. Our main focus is about measuring light in anger. As you can see on, the, on this slide, we have a mobile phone, you have a kind of light cone, and what we are doing is just to measure this cone. So uh, maybe you, you, uh, it's not really easy for you to understand the link with uh, people like Apple or whatever, but in our technology, we are able to measure, of course, displays, but also any kind of component which can emit some light. And especially even if you do not know uh, the, the kind of component, it is Vexel, LiDAR, or whatever. Uh, about, for example, LiDAR, it is exactly what you have on a self-driving vehicle. So in fact, when you have a car, uh, you have some kind of sensors which can somewhere check what is all around a vehicle. And in fact, it is exactly the same in your iPhone 10. Uh, during the conference, as you can see there, in the top of the iPhone, you have plenty of uh, sensors. So uh, especially we have uh, three of those sensors, which uh, can be fluid illuminator, proxy sensors, and dot projectors. About LDM, some people think that we are building some iPhone. No, we are not building some iPhone. We are just measuring some very specific sensors. Uh, on the uh, Face ID technology, in fact, you have uh, a map on your, on your face, like this one. And uh, this map is done by uh, several components, which can be uh, proxy sensors and dot projectors. And after, it will measure back the, let's say, the profile of your face. And in order to have such such map, in fact, the component will send some arrays of dots on your on your face, and it, it will be uh, after roughly easy to uh, to measure this uh, this array back. And with very high-end software, they are able to um, how to say to have your kind of face signature or something like this. Uh, it is a very fine technology, but if you consider that uh, this component, as it is written here, Vexel component, are uh, emitting some visible or infrared light. About the face ID, of course, it's not visible light. Otherwise, you will not see anything, so it will be a bit boring. Uh, so it is infrared. About infrared, uh, the challenge is not to burn your eyes. 
infrared uh, light can be a bit, uh, let's say, critical. And uh, about uh, people who are doing some kind of face ID uh, system, there's two challenges. First, from one iPhone to another one, you, are, you have to be sure that uh, it will be absolutely reliable. So, uh, for example, my face, uh, if I use one iPhone or one other iPhone, it has to, to recognize me and to be sure that it is working. Second, it should not burn my eyes. So, there's uh, several things directly linked to safety uh, control. And for this, we have to measure one by one. About LDIM, so since roughly uh, 20 years, I'm a bit old, uh, we are, we are um, the leaders of measurement of such uh, light in anger. And after, uh, uh, the challenge was to, to be able to, to convince people like Apple. So in fact, we have worked since uh, roughly five years in order to have some system usable in production line because we were absolutely convinced that our technology will be used by uh, roughly every mobile maker, display maker, and so on. Uh, we were a bit surprised to have Apple first. Uh, maybe uh, some of most of you are working with Apple people, which can be, what to say, extremely demanding guys. Okay, and uh, for a small company like ourselves, we were uh, roughly uh, 30 guys somewhere in the in the west of France. Most of people from Apple absolutely have no idea about France, and especially Normandy. They say, okay, guys. But uh, we met these, uh, these people, and especially with their hardware uh, technical team, since something like uh, well, maybe 10 years, because most of the research laboratory already use our technology. You can consider that whatever the mobile you have, and whatever the display you can see, at one time during the research, it has been measured by our product. So, of course, we were on laboratories. It, mean, it means sorry, that we provide only few extremely technical systems. Going to production line, it's another story. Because uh, instead of having uh, maybe a few dozen systems, you have to be able to provide plenty of systems on a very short time. Uh, about this, uh, this uh, challenge, we have worked with Apple Teams in order to, to be able to provide the needed quality. And about this thing, when uh, let's say, uh, the keynote has been done uh, last year, uh, even one month before, we were absolutely not sure that the iPhone 10 will be released. It means that without our technology, that was absolutely impossible to release the iPhone 10. And once again, we have just system like the one you, are, you, are, uh, you have there, measuring and uh, being able to analyze the, the light in details. So at the end, it works, fortunately. And uh, on October last year, we have been extremely honored by the visit of Tim Cook. And uh, for us, that was something, as you can imagine, extremely strange. Uh, <laughs> okay, So uh, you can see the guy you can see just uh, during keynotes and so on. Uh, here, it is my president and my brother as well. <laughs> I'm not on the picture because I was managing the <laughs> other people. But uh, even if, of course, we have been extremely honored, but for us, it is an extremely big challenge because having Tim Cook there uh, is for us a very big pressure because we have done one time, but uh, we have to be able to uh, reproduce the, the job we have already done with those guys and uh, to, to be able to continue. Uh, I mean that almost every day with our research team, production team, and so on, we are extremely focused on quality. And my message today is most of you guys are involved in software. I was a, a former developer. Right now, I'm not so good. 
But uh, I think that working with Apple people or for Apple people is one thing. What is extremely, let's say, uh, we have a very great satisfaction is when you are able to provide those guys, which are extremely big, something which will be important for them. Of course, other company will be able to provide, but uh, the challenge we have been able to achieve is to be roughly the best at one time. I don't know if we will continue in uh, coming years. Of course, we will try. But uh, if, at least in, uh, in your professional life, you are able to achieve this thing, it's really a very big satisfaction for us. So at the end, it is my last slide, my last slide. If any kind of people in this room would, uh, would like to join our team, we have some, uh, some place in our dev team, as it is not only focused on software application and so on, it's a bit different. It can be really uh, with, um, in relation with uh, hardware and so on, but if any of you guys are interested, we have many places open. <laughs> Thank you. That's an amazing story. When we, yeah, when we when we saw that uh, Tim Cook was heading to uh, Calvados to meet you, it was kind of impressive. Like, and as usual with Apple, you were like, it was no no, there was no way to 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 know that to know that they were working with a, a company in, in in Normandy. No, no, that was fully confidential from our side. Uh, even our collaborators, in fact, from my side, have been advised uh, a few days before his visit. But uh, we have e been able to, uh, to announce his visit only five minutes before he comes. Wow. He came. Wow. And how do you manage to, to keep this, the secret of working with Apple? Uh, in fact, there's a very easy way <laughs> that uh, when you are working with Apple on such project, which is extremely confidential, uh, we have signed tons of paper. And uh, if you have any kind of security breach for a company like our side, uh, we were dead. Oh, okay, you die. <laughs> okay. That's, yeah. <laughs> it's a very good challenge for us. <laughs> um, we have a question from the audience. Uh, how did you um, uh, were uh, how did you were able to scale? Uh, the production to match the requirements? Ah, yeah, that was a very big challenge. Uh, in order to give an idea, uh, around March uh, 2017, we were something like uh, 30 people. Uh, in June, we were 120. So uh, it means that uh, we have really worked on this thing, and especially an Apple, it is something which has been somewhere incredible. Uh, they have dedicated some specific team in order to help us. Uh, in this project, of course, we had uh, something which was uh, really coming from a niche market, but Apple has really helped us. Even if these guys are extremely demanding, they have focused on the, some teams, and we have worked, and at the, not at the end, but maybe after a month, we had a team. Mm -hmm. And there were no difference between someone coming from LDM and someone coming from Apple. We had only one target, mm -hmm. and no way to fail. Mm -hmm. What about the pressure? Was it like... Oh, yeah. That was incredible. I've not More I've than usual, I mean? Ah, you cannot imagine. I have not slept for one year. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe three hours a day. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And you, you told us that uh, so you scaled your team to um, up to 130 people. How did you manage to find the, um, the people with the good skills? Because, uh, uh, I mean, it's a niche market, uh, it's hard to find. Yeah, yeah, uh, there's two ways. First, uh, our research team was existing since a long time. And uh, we have focused on this team, and we have tried to, to have additional people, and, you know, uh, and we have, how to say, included them directly in the team. And after, of course, most of the people are dedicated to production, and we have scaled the line uh, to be able to, um, to include new people without any kind of knowledge, because in our kind of system, it is extremely technical. 
roughly nobody knows of this. Otherwise, w you would have plenty of companies like Elim in, in the world. Yes. And uh, there's no. <laughs> and, uh, so we have really scaled the, the line. And once again, uh, people from Apple, they have been a, a great help. Without their help, no way to achieve because uh, they learned us how to train people or to have new people and so on and so on. Yeah, that's that's interesting because that's not usually what we hear from from Apple. Uh, Except yeah. if they actually want to buy you, do you think at some time that's what? I mean, obviously, we don't have to well, it can it can be a good question. Uh, after uh, today, it's really. Uh, impossible to know what will be the future for us in the uh, coming years. So, uh, of course, we are interesting many people. Uh, Apple can be interested, but uh, I don't know. And uh, other companies uh, elsewhere can be interested as well. Competitors, like manufacturers, manufacturers, many many kind of people. But from our side, it is something you cannot manage. We cannot drive the company thinking that, uh, okay, we will sell back our company to someone else. Uh, from my side, I'm working in this thing, in this company, since 1992. Okay, so it's part, it's a very big part of my uh, professional life, and my target is not to say, okay, I will make a lot of money or whatever. No, we have done something, being able to achieve a product which is used on production line in Apple, it is something incredible, it is ju just like Olympic Games. Yeah. Don't care if you will win uh, next time. You will be there. you were there. Yeah, that's yeah. all. <laughs> nice. Answer. No, that's, that's, that's great. Yeah. And but, but, uh, talking about the future, like, uh, are you present in the in the new phone uh, manufacturing lines? And it's a bit uh, confidential question. Okay, but uh, let's say, like, do you think you will be present in in a long no, for a long yeah, time? Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, in fact, today. Uh, we are number one in this field. We are number one not because uh, other companies cannot do uh, maybe better than ourselves, but we are working in this niche market since more than 20 years. And when we have started the company, just give me 10 years after, we were sure that uh, it will become extremely important for the market. And today, for example, Vexel, of course, we speak about the mobile phone and so on, but it is for us maybe the most important hardware technology from uh, maybe for 50 years. It is a critical technology. No. Because in what kind of other uh, domain or fields do you think it will be like really uh, crucial? <laughs> for example, self-driving vehicle you have everywhere. Uh, with, with this kind of technology, Apple has been able to prove to everybody that it can be extremely reliable in terms of security. So you can imagine, I don't know, with a bank system or whatever, it is more, uh, security speaking, it's a higher level than your fingerprint. It can become extremely important for security, for health, for example, and uh, there's many other applications. In a, just to give you an idea, roughly every week, we see uh, emerging technology directly linked to uh, Vexel or whatever. Uh, what Apple has done, in fact, is to, to prove to everybody, all companies and uh, all other industries, that they have been able to include such technology, which, we, uh, which is sorry, extremely technical, in a just piece of sheet of iPhone. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's that's incredible. That's kind of what they've done for USB or other kind of, of technologies. Absolutely. But this one is less visible for the... Yeah, yeah, and most of people have not really understood the importance of this technology. Yeah, because most of the competitors are actually saying that they, they do the same. Are they? No comment. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Um, thank you. Thank you very much thank for being with us.